Hello and welcome to the Daily Meal for Wednesday the 5th of October 2022. Today was match day. Uh, not a lot of hope was existing in Millwall fans' minds before the game. And then the game was played and we didn't lose but we didn't win. And it was a really bad game between two uh, really bad teams at times. I thought I was watching a, a League One uh, game. Um, yeah, so the result, if you don't know by now, was 1-1. One, one. Um, the referee gave them a penalty after nine minutes, which they scored, and which coincidentally was their only shot on target. Um, Rotherham really didn't have much going on for them. And Zion Fleming scored an absolute screamer. Uh, in open play, and we got a 1 1 draw out of that game. Um, Tyler Berry missed a 1 on 1, and Bradshaw had a couple of uh, decent chances that maybe could have been goals, but apart from that, not much in the middle side either. And well, let's just read it. This is the match report from millwc.co.uk. Uh, Rotherham United and Mill drew 1 1 in Skybase Championship at the ACL New York Stadium on Wednesday night. An early Dan Barleza penalty kick gave the Millers the lead in Yorkshire by stunning the effort from Zion Fleming three minutes from the half time break, ensured the Sheffield Twelves on the road. Gary Rowett made six changes from the 11 and took to the field at Ewood Park on Saturday afternoons. Danny McMahon, Sean Hutchinson, Tom Bradshaw, Tyler Berry, Andres Vogel Salmon, and Jules Savile all came to the side. Yes, and what I didn't mention in that, in that uh, opening uh, speech, four at the back. It was four at the back. And we did play a lot better. We did play a lot better, but Rotherham, um, they're not very good. So Mason Bennett, meanwhile, was on the substitutes bench, which also included names such as Ben Ekobe, Jamie Shackleton, and Callum Styles. Uh, playing four at the back, the line started on the front football, one, one nil behind. Nine minutes on the clock as Barlaser beat George Long just from 12 yards after Jake Cooper's foul. And ben Wiles calls referee Dean Whitestone to point to the penalty spot. Uh, with chances in front of goal lacking in the opening 45 minutes, Barry could and perhaps should have levelled for the Lions on the half hour mark. But in a rare entry to the Rotherham penalty area, the attacker flashed wide of the far post. Uh, Barry then crossed for Bradshaw, who turned the ball over before uh, Brooke Norton cuffy then curled over at the other end. As a half time whistle came into view. Uh, three minutes from time, however, Millwall were level in exceptional circumstances. After receiving a ball from Billy Mitchell, Fleming created space for himself before unleashing an unstoppable 20 yard curler into the top corner. An effort from Ogbeni was deflected wide as the second half got underway, while Fleming's free kick was tipped onto the crossbar by Victor Johansson. Yes, Fleming once again hits the crossbar. He loves seeing the crossbar. Uh, the resultant corner kick saw Bradshaw head wide from close range, with Johansson breaking the goal net in his attempts to reach the ball. A wilds blazed over as the Millers looked to put themselves back in front. Bradshaw's poked forward uh, towards goal from Fleming's cross, sneaking just wide as the Lions looked to do the same with 67 minutes played. The two then combined three minutes later as Bradshaw laid the ball off to Fleming, who shot straight at Johansson before Bradshaw and Vogel Samuel were replaced by Ben Capo and Bennett with 15 minutes to play in the final quarter of an hour, try as they might, neither team could find a decisive goal, meaning that the points were shared in Yorkshire. And the team was long again. Cooper, Hutchinson, Wallace, Mitchell, Savile, Burry, uh, McNamara, Bradshaw, Bogle, Sammer, Fleming, and the subs were Styles on the 85th minute for Burry, a uh, Phoebe for Bradshaw on the 75th minute, and Bennett for Vogel Sammer on the 76th minute. Our new substitutes would be Akowski, Honeyman, Evans, and Shackleton. Um, what, was, what, what, what else can I say? Um, watching the game, you see Rotherham didn't have much about them. Um, they resorted in the end. They brought Tom Leaves on and just passed like pumping long balls towards him. They couldn't really um, do anything down down the wings. Like I said, they, they only had one shot on target. That was the penalty. They had a lot of other shots, but they were just like, um, just crazy shooting over, shooting wide. Um, 
what else can we say? Um, it's a Bradshaw playing up front on his own. It's four two three one. Um, so he's trying to hold the ball up, also trying to like um, press high up. And he hasn't been playing for a while, even though he's been on the bench for a few games. So obviously he tired very quickly. And I'm looking at the clock, and I'm like, oh, 60 minutes. Where's the subs? You're going to take him off, yeah? 65th minute? You're going to take him off now? 70th minute? No, still not taking him off. And then 75th minute, then it comes, you take him off about a phobie. And that was literally, didn't do anything. Um, that was a massive mistake. Um, and he brings Bennett on for Vogel Summers. Uh, Bennett goes on the right wing. Vogel Summers playing on the right. Um, yeah, wow. So they play 4 2 3 1. And the two, the outside left and the outside right. Uh, Burry was on the left, Vogel Sam was on the right. So when they came back into the middle, they were on the wings. That's how it worked. Fleming was in the middle, Bradshaw was up front on his own. Um, yeah, the, the substitution should have been made a lot earlier. Um, as, as the game went on, you could see, we started to play more football. Uh, we were the better team. We should have won that game. Uh, no doubt about that. But the game management wasn't there. Um, Bradshaw was blown out of his arse after 60 minutes should have been replaced. You wait another 15 minutes, what are you waiting for? You think he's going to get a second wind? Um, just replace him. You've got five substitutes now. As I've said before, using the substitutes in the era of five substitutes is going to be very important for managers going forward. Um, just replace I think, the entire front line. Um, I thought Styles should have come on for Burry as well. Um, I would have placed, we put Bennett on up front for Bradshaw. Even though Bennett's not the tallest, he, he's very strong. He can hold the ball up. He can bat for it up there. I thought Bradshaw would have played very well as well. Um, I think the old team played very well. Um, you could say Cooper with the giving the penalty away. He shouldn't really um, slid in in the penalty area. But... It wasn't a penalty. They gave the, the referee was a bit weird. He gave them that, but then on in other places on the pitch, he, he didn't give us anything. Like the play, I mean, all players are literally being dragged down, grabbed, and shirts pulled, pulled to the ground. Oh, play on, play on the side. But you gave them a penalty for literally nothing. Um, but I don't know. Um, yeah, um, we should have won that game. I think it's still a symptom that there's problems there. Um, we'll see what happens now against Middlesbrough. Do we stay with a four, or do we go with the three-five-two? I think one of the reasons why the three-five-two wasn't working this season is that for some reason this season, Rao is now more mostly exclusively telling them to play through the middle. Then what? The hell are the two wing backs doing then? Why have them if you're not playing down the wings? It literally makes no sense. If you're just going to play through the middle, why have wing backs? There's literally no point. You can see switching to a four, even though it wasn't four four two, it was four two three one. I thought it was a. It did kind of work, except for Bradshaw should have been replaced after a certain amount of time. Um, and you would think if we're going to play like that, um, we probably kind of need a more target man style striker. Um, and that you could say that maybe Vogel Summer could play in that position. Um, but uh, yeah, Tim, we're making improvements, but it's it's very slow, bit by bit. Um. So, we probably should have won this game. We didn't, it wasn't outright we should have won it, but we is one of those games where we could have. 
if we did a little few a few things a little bit better we probably could have won it so now we go back to an away uh, home game now on Saturday Marisville look like they're still not going to have a manager so that's going to be interesting um, the crowd who knows um, there's another train strike the club's been handing out discount vouchers to people so interesting to see what kind of crowd turns up and how they react to what's going to be served up in front of them and not only that but we've got the, the fact that the game's on Wednesday we've got two days now Thursday Friday and then the game's on Saturday you're going to make more changes I hope so even though that who do you play then do you play Shackleton on the right for the Vogel Summer position you put Styles on for Bury. Um, what do you do? Interesting to see what he does. Do you play Ben out front? Um, maybe start him and take him off our time. What do you do? I don't know. I imagine you probably start a phobia at home. He does all right in the den sometimes. Um, but we'll see. Um, but yet again, what is this? Uh, 12, we're now 12 away games without a win and our next away game is uh, at Bristol City so we might have to wait until the end of the month against Huddersfield for our away win because they're not a very good team either so there you go now let's hear some of the post match comments so Gary Rowan explains the formation change as Mill will move to a back four the Lions use the 4-2-3-1 system and they have 1-1 draw against Rotherham United Gary Rowett said the Mill had nothing to lose by moving away from the third back five against Rotherham United. Many supporters had been desperate for the Lions to move to the back four after a number of poor results on the road. Rowett had previously considered making the switch before the international break, but decided that Saturday's 2 1 loss against Blackburn Rovers would be the catalyst for such a change. Mill ended up using the 4 2 3 1 formation with Murray Wallace at left back, Andreas Fogelsam and Tyler Berry played either side of Brian Fleming, Tom Bradshaw leading the line on his own. The thinking behind it, the thinking behind it was our waveform was no good enough. Rowett said when asked about the decision, I had to try something different. I felt today was the game to do that. We had nothing to lose by trying something new. The challenge I have now is that our home form has been good playing a back five. We we'll made that decision based on the opponent, based on what we think and how the players recover. I was quite pleased with it. It did leave us hoping. I thought we had a good control of the game. I think it was important that our attacking players can do the business down the other end. Um, so it looks like he's uh, he may go back to uh, three five two again, or three three at the back, and then the two wing backs, and then just play through the middle. Um, we'll see if he does that, and and then we play worse, and then lose. He's the one who's got to deal with that. So this is also from the Southern News. uk. He's got a little bit of everything. Mill boss praises Simon Fleming for stunning equaliser. Dutch man scored his second goal of the season on Wednesday's 1-1 draw against Rotherham United. Uh, Gary Rout describes Simon Fleming as a talented boy after his incredible long-range goal. helped Mill will earn a point against Rotherham United. The Dutch man has already scored once this season after being credited with the opening goal against Blackpool. Before the international break, although his astonishing equaliser at the New York Stadium certainly made fans sit up and take notice of his ability. Rowett wasn't surprised by what he saw from the Ajax Academy graduate, admitting that the goal should help him to kick on the championship. Zion is a talented boy, I've said that before, he said often. He's going to benefit massively from games like this. A really physical, direct game that you don't get in the area of the visa. He's going to learn and get better and better as he goes along. But he's a, he's a great left foot strike. He hits the free kick with the right foot. He scored a header the other week. So he's got a little bit of everything. I just think he'll keep getting better and better. Well, let's hope he does. And let's hope he does it uh, at a steady pace. So we might actually win a game soon. Um, this is from LondonNewsOnline.co.uk. I liked our response. Smeal Boss Rowett. Praises resilience as his side fight back for a point at Rotherham. Gary Rowett hailed Mill's resilience as the Lions fall back to claim a point. The 
taking a 1-1 draw with Rotherham on Tuesday night, which I predicted, by the way. You saw the video yesterday. At the end of the video, I do my after showing you the prediction from whoscored.com and David Pratton, I then gave my prediction, and it was a 1-1 draw. Uh, the lines fell behind. Yeah, we know all this. Uh, Millwall are still without an away win this season, but Rowett felt there were plenty of positives to take from an improved performance in the New York Stadium. It was a much better away performance, said Rowett. Apart from going a goal down, which is symptomatic about we from home, where we give opportunities to the home team, you can't do that places like this, particularly in their first game under a new manager. That's always going to give them a little bit of a lift. I've no complaints about the penalty. Coop's actually defended really well all night. It was just that one moment. But sometimes you live and die by that as a defender. Long he guesses the right way, but I had no complaints about the decision. Well, um, Gary Rout was quite animated on the touchline. He, in fact, got a yellow card at the end of the match in the 98th minute, where it was. Um, he was moaning quite a bit at some decisions, like I said. Uh, Rotherham were dragging and holding and pulling down the all players, and the referee's like, play on. But then he gives that powder puff uh, penalty to them in the opening 10 minutes, like. You set the standard, you set the bar by giving them that. And then when there are worse fouls going on in the rest of the pitch, you're not giving them. What the fuck was that about? Normally it's the other way around. You need the bar is set higher for a foul in the penalty area. So, like, oh, if that, was, if that was in the middle of the pitch, we would give it. But because it's in the penalty area, I don't want to give a penalty for that. So it needs to be worse, and it was completely the other way around. Um, so yeah, um, what I liked was our response. We didn't go under, we didn't shrink, and I actually thought we controlled like, quite large parts of the game. I think they had one shot on target, which was a penalty. He's been he's been looking at the stats as well. Other than that, our keeper has had nothing to deal with. We had Tyler Bruce chance in the first half. We had Zion's free kick, which the keeper saves, and Tom Bradshaw has had a couple of brilliant. Brilliant chances. So there are lots of things to be confused by. We can still play with more quality, and we can still show a little bit more composure. But certainly, with a new formation, uh, there were some bits that I really liked. Uh, Fleming broke his mill duck of a header in a two-one win over Blackpool last month. And the Dutch midfielder uh, has doubled his tally for the season. His style was such a strike. Unsurprisingly, Rao was full of praise for the former Fortuna Sittard man, who's becoming more and more. Influential, and then he goes on to quote the quote that I just read in the other story. So, on that note, thank you for watching and goodbye.